Okay, that's actually impaled in his arm. I knew what to do right now. Through the training that we're receiving here, we'll hopefully have a better outcome for the victims and a safer rescue for the rescuers. Machine Rescue Program started five years ago. We started off doing awareness training programs just to kind of alert people to what the problem is and to know not to go jumping into the situation until they'd gotten more training. And so now this is the first program we're doing where it's the full-blown three-day training program. Realistic, real-life training possible in a real industrial setting. This is a 24-hour machine level operations training. We begin with how to manage a, a machine rescue incident, and then we follow that up with, well, how do you actually extricate or remove this patient um, from the machine? The, the final day, we um, have the firefighters respond in crews and have hands-on extrication scenarios where they go from first arriving through the termination of the incident and, uh, and perform all of the skills that, that they learned in the, in the first couple of days. We're going to put together the things that we've learned so far in the program. I want you to find a safe way to approach into this incident. There is live energy in that machine. I've got a patient that's inside of there. Maybe in more than one location inside that machine. We're not done with this scenario until that patient is out on a backboard. You're going to be in command. You're going to use your worksheets. And you're going to run it. So what you've done there, is there are really control. only three ways that you can get someone out of a piece of machinery. Number one, you can take the machine apart or disassemble it. Number two, you can cut the person out of the machine using some kind of a torch. Or number three, you can lift and spread the machine apart using some kind of a hydraulic or pneumatic device. Okay. That'll take pressure off his arm. We can get this part. Okay. We're training. Try something. No, I wasn't going to let anybody get hurt. But I want you to take your best guess as to how I'll go about this. From my perspective, it went fantastic, except I feel a little overworked. <laughs> <laughs> We've been funded by Myosha since 1990, and they originally funded us to do hazmat training for fire departments, and then we did confined space rescue training for fire departments, trench rescue, okay. and we also did a program on how to rescue firefighters who get trapped inside burning buildings. And then this is the next kind of logical extension of this technical rescue series of programs that we've developed. The benefits for this training program is that it gives firefighters the knowledge and skills that they need to have to be able to respond to incidents. For 16 people that were killed in 2007, somehow or other being caught in a machine, and so it's important for firefighters to be able to respond to these kind of situations and to know what to do. One of the skills that we've learned here is the disassembly of a machine and also controlling energy sources such as pneumatic, hydraulic, or electrical. These are very dangerous situations that they're getting themselves into or can be. And so if they don't know exactly what they're doing, they could end up hurting firefighters as well as hurting the victim. You don't need a, a General Motors or a Ford plant or a Chrysler or a Big Three. Uh, we see machine rescues in the urban setting everywhere from food processing to uh, roller presses to printing presses to uh, a variety of non-auto related as well as auto related type machines.